Hello and welcome to this lecture on Adobe Photoshop by Edgeonix. In this lecture we're going to be going over the blur tool which is a little drop, the sharpen tool and smudge tool. And much like the, the sponge, the burn and dodge, <coughs> the shapes and the icons have their origins in photography, I can only imagine. So we're going to start out with the blur tool. And the blur tool's got these strength settings, it's pretty basic. I usually like to have it set to 100%. It's also got this mode right here. Let's take a look at it with normal. And I'm going to duplicate these layers. And if you watch the actions, I could have set up an action. I don't use them enough. Very, Not that many people do. Uh, I could set up an action just to duplicate my layer six times. But anyway. So this first one, I am using the blur tool, and it's set to 100%. Now the longer I hold it on there, the more it's going to blur. Okay, so if I set this mode to lighten, so I'm doing the, oh. Set it to lighten. I'm going to do the other side of his face. So on this side is normal, and this side is set to lighten. So in blurring, when it, you get up really close to it, It maintains more of the light pixels um, and allowing them to blurring out over top of the dark ones. Whereas on the dark side, it does the opposite. And, and the light pixels are kind of eaten up by the dark. So you compare them to the original. Both the eyes look really similar, but with the burn on the left, or with the uh, darken version of the blur on the left, or normal, I'm sorry, version of the blur on the left, and then the lighten one on the right. Now if you want to see the darken one, it's a pretty dramatic tool. So we'll have our blur, we'll set it to darken. So you can really tell in the little parts of the eye, and the spots too, that it's, it's kept these spots. And they're the same. They were there before. Oops. And you can just go over that again with normal. And if you compare that to just a regular normal, and I'll do two of them. This is a little bit different. But darken, um, obviously if you do too much darken or lightening, you'll get like these bright spots for lightening, which might be something you want. It's a pretty cool effect. Kind of like a starry effect. Um, Obviously, you can bring this into the eyes. You can blur the eyes and yeah, get that effect, even if you really wanted to. Um, but anyway, that's the blur tool. This is pretty handy. It's just like a. Um, it's just the concept of instead of making a selection and then blurring it. You know, it's it's a lot more just touch and go. Let's just take a look at what happens when we blur any of these color modes. And we can compare that to the normal blur. To me it looks almost identical. But as you can see,
Well, that's because it's, it is almost, it is identical. Sometimes these don't stick. But anyway, I'll throw this layer out then. Now I'll show you the color blur. Okay. So it's not really doing a lot. However, I have a feeling that if we have a lot of colors, that was a cool little accident. We have a lot of colors that this blur is going to do something. Still not doing a lot. Then again, I never used those uh, particular versions. I suppose, like anything, it's just going to be blurring the colors, um, or based on color, whereas the other ones are doing it based on light and dark. So, let's just take a look at the sharpen tools. Essentially, the the opposite. You have protect detail on here. You don't have that in the blur tool. So in the sharpen tool, same amount of color modes, we'll be doing it normal to start out with, and we'll, let's compare project detail. So when you're sharpening, it's going to make uh, the difference a lot more exaggerated. If I take this off, and I go over here, you see the problem that the sharpening algorithm is, is taking control and it's not actually taking into consideration the detail. Let's back to my sharpen tool. This is useful, for example, I have right here. If I didn't want the difference between his head and his torso to be so great, his head looks so forward and his torso looks way back there, I can hit it with a sharpen tool a little bit. Now sharpening is always going to no, I'm not. I always have this protect detail on. Sharpening isn't a perfect solution, but if I just hit these choice areas, I can change the depth a little bit. Just have to be careful because obviously it creates all that right there. And it's still processing. It's a lot faster than a blur tool. You know, just using it very subtly is all that's ever required. So the problem is that the sharpen tool is taking something that doesn't have detail and trying to make detail out of it, which is a lot easier to take something that has detail and to blur it like we've been doing. So the sharpen tool, not one I use a whole lot, but like anything else, you can set to dark and enlighten. If I wanted to just kind of uh, sharpen just the, the small light hairs that are coming through here. I can do that and it works better. So these settings will actually help you a lot more with the sharpen tool. And if I want to bring out just this dark up here, or the ear, just this back shadow of the ear will be the most affected. Or any of these dark parts. Let's take a look at the smudge tool, and this is one I use a lot. Um, you can use a smudge tool for a lot of different stuff. This is kind of a pixelated image, but I did notice that there were some background effects that were kind of strange. Like, you can get rid of this. It's not the ideal tool to use in that case. Um, in fact, there's not much on this drawing I can do with it. But I use a smudge tool to... Uh, like if I wanted to put a little bend in this shoot of bamboo, I'll take the smudge tool and it's already set to nice and big. And I can almost like liquefy in the background. So it's like, uh, kind of like the bloat tool in a lot of ways. But when I just sit it there, it doesn't do anything. I can create some subtle effects that 
people wouldn't really notice. Like here I can have the background kind of being pushed away from them. But it's kind of like using the liquify. But not, you know, just having it in the form of a brush as opposed to going through all that trouble. Of course, liquify will give you a little bit cleaner lines. The smudge tool has a strength setting just like anything else. I don't really need to explain how that does. There's also a little box up here. And it can use a lot of resources too. There's a box up here called finger painting, which is kind of new. Now if you see what just happened, this is pretty fun. Um, the amount, the area that it's picking up, very similar to the color mixer brush. The area that it's picking up, it's just kind of like smearing that. And there, there, I think there used to be No. So you can uh, you can do it lightly. Or you can go crazy with it. That's creepy. But that's what finger paint is and it's pretty fun. So that does it for these tools. Not not a whole lot there. Finger paint's pretty cool. Um, and obviously I use the blur a lot. But aside from that, you know, keep in mind that these are the things that you can use without having to go to the painstaking effort of making selections and doing all that stuff. They're all ready to go kind of uh, kind of tools. So thanks for watching and keep practicing.